six. Is that what you said? Yes. We have dy over dt is equal to y cubed. Well, I need the y over here. Yep. So I have y to the negative 3 dy equals 1 dt. It's always assumed 1 there. So whenever you take the antiderivative, it turns into 1 instead of 0? No. Antiderivative, this becomes a t. Oh, okay. I was so confused last night. Me and Harrison were like, because sometimes, like, whenever you, like, we do, do you, oh, never mind. I just, okay. Really Does that answer? Yeah. Number six? Yeah. What about the left side? The left side, this would become y to the negative 2 over negative 2, and then the plus c over here. So do you not do anything with the dy? The dy just means it's a derivative. Yes, because what's the derivative of y? 1 dy. All right, we good with this? What? The dy just means a derivative. Like this, this just means that's a derivative. There's a 1 understood in front of it. Because if it was a 0, it wouldn't be there. No. Would it be times five? Yeah. yeah. No. It, this. It's just this. This is a whole expression, which means this piece right here is a derivative. So you're really just taking the antiderivative part. Uh huh. The dy just tells you it's a derivative. All that I want you to do is do this in front of it. Okay. We okay with that? That page. You don't now have to put y equals on the general solution. No. All right. Can we go to... Well, how about 15? All right. 15, okay. On 15, the directions are on the page before, and it tells us, you know, all this, find the velocity and distance after two seconds. That's what we're trying to find. So does that mean time is two? So on 15, I have this. Good with that? So, how do I find velocity if I know acceleration? Antiderivative. You have to remember, velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. So, is it... I could actually change this if I wanted to, to dA over dt, right? Because is an acceleration a derivative? Yes. Uh, okay. okay. So what I'm really going to do, what I really have is this. which is now a differential equation that I can take the antiderivative of both sides, right? Well, the antiderivative of dA is what? Well, 
Well, no. What is it? What's the antiderivative acceleration? Velocity. Right? So V is equal to, what am I going to do with this piece? Well, okay. You want to say 2T plus 1 to the 1 third, but do I need a U to U? No, yes. No, U is 2T plus 1. DU is 2DT. So what do I need? A half. So is it 1 half? u to the four-thirds over four-thirds. And I have to clean that up before I can do anything with it. I can't, I can't do that like that. Isn't v equal to three-eighths times 2t plus 1 to the 4 thirds plus c. I took an antiderivative, so I've got to have a plus c. Right? What? Uh -huh. Okay, now what do I know about velocity? When t is 0, v is 0. That's what V sub O means. V sub O, that O at the bottom, means T is zero. Okay? So, zero equals three-eighths plus C? No, that is not right, is it? Yeah. T is zero. What's two times zero? Plus one. One to the four thirds. One times three eighths. Right? Will you agree with that? So what is C? Negative three eighths. So now, is it V equal to 3 eighths 2T plus 1 to the 4 thirds minus 3 eighths? Right? You okay with that? Now, is velocity or V the derivative of S, position. So instead of V, I can write DS over DT, or D actually DV. Huh? Do we have to do that? Do you want no, to no. That? But you're going to take the antiderivative of both sides, aren't you? Huh? Uh-huh. This is for position. Oh, here is my velocity equation, right? So we have three of them? Well, I want velocity and position. Uh, but I really want it when t is what? Zero. Two. No. Don't I? I need to plug two in the velocity. So that is one, like, right there is the first line. That's what you're on the first line? No. What I have on the first line is putting 2 in for T. Because on the previous page... So we haven't even gotten there yet. No. Okay. But um, guys, I cannot do this in my head. Let's go to that. Huh? Let's go to that. Yes, but I'm taking... Five to the four thirds power. Two point eight three one. Good. Because two. 
2.831 is the correct answer. Well, it's, is it seconds? After two seconds, isn't it? Oh, well, no, it wouldn't be seconds. It would be... Uh, yeah, centimeter. I was going to say it. Is it velocity so much per time? Right? Does that problem make sense to you? Yes, but what is... Do you have DSB? Like, what, which one is that supposed to be? Well, it, this... This is velocity. Just to the left of it, that yeah. B looking like an S. Yeah. Now, that's a derivative. I just want you to know that velocity is a derivative of position. So B equals DS over DT or B it, equals D? It should be DS over DT. Okay, yes. Okay. How do we find position? Antiderivative, right? So the antiderivative, and I'm just going to say. S, because I'm working with the, I'm not going to put it on each side. I know mentally I'm doing that, right? So I can take the antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of this? I think, once again, I need a U. U is 2T plus 1. DU is 2DT, so I need a 1 half, right? One half times three eighths. Would you agree with that? Now, isn't this u to the seven thirds over seven thirds? Now, this is where I want you to be careful, because I did the antiderivative of this, but I'm also doing the antiderivative of this, aren't I? This piece has a u. This piece doesn't. What am I taking the antiderivative with this piece? T. So this is minus Three eight T plus C. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I know. That's why I chose to work this one. Now, isn't this good grief? Nine over 112, right? Yes. Yes. Well, this flips over as a 3 sevenths, doesn't it? So I have 9 on top and 112 on bottom of 2t plus 1 to the 7 thirds minus Three eight T plus C. Yes? No? Now, how do I find C? You plug in T and S. What is T? T is two. T is zero. Zero. What is S? Ten. Ten. Right? So whenever so ten what whenever you have the velocity, you make t equal to whatever the velocity is, or what it, like whatever because we did we did two earlier. Well, we we did we're going to do two at the end, but here I've got to find c, so I have to use my given information. Okay. Uh, well, this is easy. This is one. Plus C. Is that right? T is zero. Oh. S is ten. Oh my goodness. 
What is C? One what? Four ones over one twelve. <laughs> Is that what you have? No. Did you take ten minus this? Uh, oh no, subtract it. So S equals nine over one twelve two T plus 1 to the 7 thirds minus 3 8 t plus 1 1 1 over 1 12. Right? So that's the first line? That's no. no. That's S. That's the formula for S. What do I want to find about S? When t is 2. When t is 2, what is S? How close are we to getting the first line? Yeah. Well, you had the first line. Oh, okay. <laughs> you had it. When we did the lawsuit, we plugged two in. 2.831. 2 2.831. Oh. Uh, okay. And that was like? That was velocity after two seconds. Units per second? Uh, centimeters per second. Want me to do it in my head again? Yeah, I'll probably do it in my head. I got 12.605. 12.605? Yeah. Yeah. You are right. Wow. That's a lot. These problems are time consuming. Yes, they are. I, I agree. And you plugged in two back in here. The right. I plugged two in here. Okay. Where there's a T. 12.605? What? Centimeters. Is it that X? No, 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 no. No. Centimeters. Everything rounds to three places in AP. Jeez. So what what was two point three one centimeters per second? Centimeters per second. Centimeters per second. Centimeters per second. And this is just centimeters. So now let's find the seconds using the No, I don't think so. I think that's the hardest. I have it marked as the hardest. All right, 17. A ball is thrown upward from the surface of the earth with initial velocity of 96 feet per second. What is the maximum height it reaches? All right, if I'm throwing a ball up, I'm right here, I, this is what's gonna happen, yes? There's uh -huh. my ball, does this. Isn't its maximum height right here? Yes. Its maximum height, what is velocity? Zero. Zero. So what I need to find out is when is velocity zero? Yes? So are you going to do this in two parts or in one whole thing? One whole thing. Okay. An easy one thing actually, Hunter. Because how do I find velocity of something? It's the antiderivative of acceleration. Do we know acceleration? 9.8. No, we're in feet. We don't talk this European stuff. It's we like use American it's stuff. It's the entire world except for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and but where, where are you sitting? In America. We use America. So what is acceleration? That's velocity. Uh, I think acceleration is negative 32. Yes. That's not yes. Thanks. You get two. Thirty-two. Yeah. Uh, Thirty-two feet per second is. That's acceleration. Acceleration of gravity in feet. Gravity. Yes. That's all it is. What? Acceleration now, of gravity in feet. Second, and then we can use. Is next to thirty-two feet per second squared. It's not feet per second. Feet, feet per second squared. 
What? What? This is Steve Oh, alright. Hey, So, do you get the negative 32? Are you okay with the negative 32? So, if I know acceleration, how do I find velocity? What's the antiderivative of this? Let's see. Yes? No, it doesn't. Now, what do I know? So, so T is 0, V is 96. Do I know that? T is 0, V is 96. So if T is 0, V is 96, is C 96. So V equals negative 32T plus 96. Do you all agree? What am I trying to find? When velocity is zero. So zero equals negative 32T plus 96. What's T? I don't think it's negative. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't think it's negative. I don't think time goes back. <laughs> so what is T? Three. Three what? Seconds. So basically, if I throw the ball that hard at 96 feet per second, which Okay. Well, maybe I shot it out of a cut. In three seconds, it's going to go up for three seconds. It's going to go up for three seconds. That's all I wanted to find. How far is it going to? Isn't that what it asked? I'm about physics right now. Oh, I'm sorry. You are correct. I didn't finish. You are correct. Okay. Time is three seconds. Right? What? V x squared equals, uh, what is that right? V x squared equals V x squared uh, minus Q A D. Minus V x squared equals Q A D. Or you could just say D equals one half A T squared and know that the acceleration is starting at zero from the top. You know, its initial velocity is zero. I'm just thinking about how to solve this. You could have solved it earlier, I think. Well, if you're not in calculus, there's different ways to solve it, but most they all kind of come back to the same thing. Gosh. Now, what does it ask? The maximum height. How do I find height? Uh, I know. Isn't height... It, Antiderivative of velocity. That's going to be velocity. Isn't height s position in a the antiderivative of velocity? So right here is s equal to negative sixteen t squared plus ninety six ninety six t plus c. Is that right? What's my initial height? Zero. From the earth. So when t is zero, what is s? Zero. Zero. So c equals zero. So c is zero. So s is this. Do you agree? So how high does it go? Oh. Three the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's what that is. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
144 feet. Okay, finish the worksheet. We'll take questions Monday.